WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's November 8th, and I'm Sarah Neal Estes. Coming up in this episode for our in-depth coverage, a crop fertilizer may be causing cancer in Midwest farming towns. I will say I worry a lot, like if in 15, 20 years, the evidence becomes more conclusive and we realize that things like nitrate do cause cancer with certainty, uh, we're going to feel really bad about how long we've sort of had an inkling and not acted on it. That story after local election news headlines. WFY reporter Katrina Pross is here to help me do the roundup. Thank you, Katrina. Of course. What is our first headline? Deb Whitfield is now the first black mayor in Marion County, winning in Lawrence last night. She won against Republican opponent David Hoffman with 53 percent of the votes. And we have a clip from that moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been an awesome opportunity. She becomes mayor after serving on the Lawrence Common Council at large for four years and on the council she served as chair of the Public Safety Committee. And the next headline, Indianapolis Mayor Democrat incumbent Joe Hogsett won his third term. Yes, with about 60 percent of the votes, Hogsett defeated Republican challenger Jefferson Shreve. And I welcome Jefferson's continued contributions toward bringing us closer to a better Indianapolis. The Indianapolis mayoral race was the most expensive in recent memory. Hogsett and Shreve reported nearly $21 million in contributions. And in Carmel, residents have a new mayor for the first time in 28 years. Republican Sue Finkham won the Carmel mayoral race. Democrat Miles Nelson conceded pretty early in the night. Finkham referred to the divisive nature of the campaign during her victory speech. I thought this election would be about the best way to leave the city. But it turned into something louder, nastier, and negative, where my opponent attacked me and painted Carmel in a negative light nationally. Former Carmel Mayor Jim Brainerd was mayor for seven terms and was first elected in 1996. This is a new era for Carmel residents. And now the news for city-county council races. There were a few surprises in the Indianapolis City County Council races. Republicans picked up one seat, but Democrats still hold a solid supermajority with 19 of 25 seats. There are a number of new Democrats on the council, including Nick Roberts in District 2, who is 23 years old. Republican Derek Cahill is the new Republican in Council District 23. And our final headline, Hamilton County voters approved three referendums in yesterday's general election. Yes, referendums passed for Carmel Clay, Hamilton Southeastern, and Sheridan Community School Districts. All three school districts will use the tax revenue for teacher pay. Michael Beresford is superintendent of Carmel Clay Schools and says investment in teacher pay will also attract more educators to the district. Uh, we want to have the best and the brightest, you know, uh, attracted come to Carmel, and especially with a national and state teacher shortage. Across the state, there were 12 total referendums, and eight of them passed. That's a wrap-up of headlines. Thank you so much for your help, Katrina. Anytime. And now for our in-depth coverage. A growing number of studies suggest federal safety levels for some crop fertilizers in water may be too high, and that could be linked to cancer. For WFYI, Side Effects Public Media's Natalie Krebs reports. It was the middle of January in 2011 when 16-year-old Jacob Peters developed a bad cough. Doctors initially diagnosed him with an upper respiratory infection. But when Jacob didn't improve, his father, Gary Peters, says he started feeling around his son's neck. And then they ordered a chest x-ray and found a three-inch tumor right below his collarbone that was compressing his trachea. Jacob, an active, healthy teen who played multiple sports, was diagnosed with an aggressive type of cancer. He passed away less than a year later while undergoing chemotherapy. The Peters family lives in Aurora, Nebraska, a small rural farming community in the central part of the state. Gary says in the years surrounding Jacob's illness, multiple kids in Aurora were diagnosed with cancer which was strange because childhood cancer overall is really rare. An average class size in Aurora is probably 95, 90 to 100 kids, somewhere in there. And so when you have seven kids at one time that have cancer, that's a pretty big deal. 
Gary says it's unclear what caused all these kids to get sick, probably a number of factors. But one possibility continues to bother him. What if it's something in the water? There is no scientific causality. There is no proof that anything in the water is causing this, but it's awfully suspicious. About a decade ago, a team of researchers at the University of Nebraska Medical Center started looking into this possibility of a connection between water quality and pediatric cancer. They looked at rural Nebraska watersheds. They found a correlation between pediatric cancer and higher rates of nitrate from farm fertilizer, as well as an herbicide called atrazine. Eleanor Rogan is a public health researcher for the ongoing study. She says it's noteworthy the watersheds that correlated with higher cancer rates often had nitrate levels below the U.S. EPA's current safe contaminant level of 10 parts per million. So that's what leads us to say, well, maybe this 10 isn't such a great idea. It should really be lower. And other people have found the same thing. The nitrate standard was set decades ago to prevent blue baby syndrome. Even so, it is common for farming communities across the Midwest to have elevated levels of nitrate that still meet federal standards. Recent studies have linked nitrate with other health issues like colorectal cancer and thyroid disease. But Mary Ward, a senior investigator at the National Institutes of Health and a leading expert on nitrate, says it's still too early to make any firm conclusions. We really need more ongoing studies to study this connection between nitrate and health, um, including specific cancers and adverse reproductive outcomes. The EPA has started to look into this issue. Nitrate is scheduled for a health reassessment that could lead to a lower standard. The agency initially slated that study for 2017, but put it off. Dave Swartney is an environmental health expert at the University of Iowa. He's concerned officials aren't acting fast enough. I will say I worry a lot, like if in 15, 20 years, the evidence becomes more conclusive and we realize that things like nitrate do cause cancer with certainty, uh, we're going to feel really bad about how long we've sort of had an inkling and not acted on it. Meeting the EPA's current nitrate standard is already difficult for many communities. Reverse osmosis systems that filter nitrate from water are incredibly expensive. Experts like Don Coulter are also concerned about this aspect. He's a pediatric oncologist at the University of Nebraska Medical Center who is involved in the ongoing nitrate study. The problem of nitrate, whether it's at 10 parts per million or if the EPA decides to lower it to 8 parts per million or 6 parts per million, that problem is going to be sent on then to those small communities who are going to have to absorb the cost. Coulter says that's why it's important that officials put resources behind helping rural communities and farmers to make drinking water safer. Natalie Krebs, Side Effects Public Media. That's WFYI News Now for today. Produced by the following people who live in your community. Darian Benson, Abriana Heron, and Kendall Antron, who also composed our podcast music. And me, Sarah Neal Estes. We hope you will subscribe and share and find us wherever you get your podcasts. That's all the news for today. WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com.